So we go on to your work at, at Intel. You already mentioned Dov Froman and his invention of the EEPROM. And uh, here's how you got into Intel. Yeah, so Dov was, uh, saw my publication, knew about my work, about the e prom and uh, invited me to come to, uh, to Santa Clara. Uh, so I joined. Uh, Hughes was a terrific company, but I really wanted to uh, get into commercial thing. You know, working for the go US government is great, but the real challenge, and exciting times were Silicon Valley. This was the early days. It's very, very first days of the microprocessor, but Intel was king of the universe in DRAM, in SRAM, in EEPROM, uh, and and they, so I, yes, so I accept yeah. that this was. Yeah, great. So, um, and you proposed an SSD to Andy Grove. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, so, so before that, let me tell a little story sure. with, with Ted. So uh, Ted was, oh, right. yep. uh, uh, so I was at, uh, at Hughes, no, at Intel, I was manager of the Santa Clara Technology Development Center, and we had a small pilot line. And one day, I'm in the pilot line, and Ted is there, and he's tinkering with one of our plasma etchers, at, or the position, some the position stuff. I said, what are you doing, Ted? And he says, well, this is an idea I have about a new DRAM capacitor, you know, a ferro something, electric capacitor. So we, we got into a conversation, and the one thing that I remember from this conversation so vividly is Ted was telling me, you know, Ali, if you, if you, uh, if you can find, if you can invent a, a semiconductor memory that is ten, ten times cheaper than anything that's out there, uh, the hierarchy will open for you, ten times cheaper. Uh, uh, system designers will take advantage of that. It, it, it's just too compelling a thing for the world to ignore a 10x lower cost or 10x cost advantage. And I always remember that. And, uh, and, and you know, recently, they told me that actually Bob Noyce told him that, so he was telling me. So yeah, and it proved, of course, very, very prescient for, for what we did in flash memory. Yeah. And the, the means by which that came out, it's a funny story, because uh, we're doing a video for the dedication of this IEEE milestone three years ago. And because of the connection with Ted Hoff that you mentioned in your uh, oral history with the Computer History Museum, we got Ted to come in and give some comments. I mentioned this 10x story to Ted, and that's when it came out that, oh, well, I learned that from Bob Noyce. And of course, you got the Bob Noyce Award yeah. a few years ago from IEEE, so that, you know, it just sort right, of sent it home. Close the loop. Close the loop. But there's even more to the story that you don't know yet. This is really interesting. Last year, the Lifetime Achievement Award was given to Dr. Simon Z, who co-invented the floating gate in 1967 at Bell Labs. He worked with William Shockley at Bell Labs. In fact, he told me that he'd written a paper with Shockley, and uh, Shockley was very humble and allowed Z to have his name first on the paper. So he was very impressed by that because Simon Z was still an up-and-coming engineer at the time, so it was a big deal. He really respected uh, Shockley's knowledge of physics and his skills and all. And he told me, when I related this story about Ted and Noyce and Ellie, that, oh, that's what uh, Shockley told me. So we don't know this for sure, but we think... Shockley told that to Noyce, huh? Yes. Isn't that something? So, but we don't, we don't know for sure Shockley told it to Noyce, but I'm willing to bet that was the case. Clo as close another, as I worked Another together. like that God told Shockley, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I thought you would appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, no, no. It's, I mean, the fact, the way that surreal comes together. Anyway, so with Andy, so Intel was developing at that time a magnetic bubble, bu bubble domain, bubble memory. Uh, TI was working on it, at and I was not involved in that project. I came to uh, Andy and I said, look, uh, I, I think that we can do a better job in, uh, you know, instead of magnetic bubbles, using e square prom. And I know it's too expensive, but it has all the characteristics. Intel was developing at that time e square prom. Uh, and you know, this is playing to Intel's strength in semiconductors. We can scale it better than anybody else. Uh, I'd, I'd like you to, to uh, allow me to have a skunk team that will just uh, develop the first solid state disk using uh, e square prom. And Andy got stuck on the skunk work. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't, he never even addressed the e square prom solid state disk. He said, 
and he knew that you know about my school form involvement, so there was no question that that we could do it. But uh, but he said, well, he, so long as I'm here, we're not going to have any skunk teams here because that's elitist, and we need to. Uh, we have 20,000 people in the company, and I need to manage them uh, without any, uh, you know, elitism. Anyway, uh, so that, I, but that was the first time I talked to anybody that could do anything about it, about solid state disk. The technology, there was no flash memory in 1981. So Iskra Palm would have waited bas basically for the flash to come along, but the concept was, I was very much driven from the Hughes days, really, to, to get an and, SSD. And you had the vision for it to be data store, not just code store? Yes, so of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So yeah. of course, for, for code store, you don't care about endurance, because you, 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 know, you program it once, maybe twice, rarely 10 times, and, and you do so in the factory, and if one bit fails, you just throw away the chip. Well, you had actually redundancy, row and column redundancy. Um, for data, that's not applicable. So 10,000 cycles, which was the specified limit of uh, the first flash memory, was just not going to cut it for data storage. Uh, when, I, when I started SunDisk, going around uh, customers, you know, like uh, you know, IBM and so on, they said, if you can't do two, 10 to the 6 uh, reliably, reproducibly, every time with zero errors, uh, you know, don't waste our time. So I knew that um, data store is completely different than, than code store, and data store, uh, you could not get to data store except through a system solution, a holistic system solution. Because the device itself, I knew intrinsically, would break down. And statistically, you'd have normal distribution of breakdown. Yeah. 